My sister kissed my fiancé on our engagement night, but my family didn't like it. Now, five years later, she's at my door asking for money, and my family is mad that I'm not giving her a dime. My mother called me recently. I hadn't talked to her in almost six years and asked for my help because my sister and her husband had just been through a terrible event. To give you some background, the man who is now married to my sister used to be meant to be my husband. Lisa, my 24-year-old sister, hooked up with Jimmy, my 26-year-old fiancé, on the day I proposed. He asked me to marry him after we had been together for almost five years, since we met in college. He surprised me by throwing a party for us on the night of our proposal. I remember being on top of the world until about 11 p.m. when I went out into the backyard to get a better view and saw my sister making out with Jimmy. So intensely were they making out that they didn't even notice me standing there with my mouth open for the first few seconds. After being with me for almost five years, I couldn't believe he was leaving me like this, even on the night we got engaged. If they did finally notice me, they broke up right away, but it was too late. There was no stopping me. I sped up in my car and drove as fast as I could to the closest hotel. Because I was so shocked by what I had seen, I was hyperventilating. It was hard for me to understand, so I wanted it to be false. Lisa then sent me a text message to say she was sorry, but she was in love with Jimmy and that they had been together for a long time. When I got that text, I was in my hotel room and I broke down like I've never done before. After Lisa, Jimmy texted me pretty much the same thing. He said he only proposed to me because he thought that if he said yes, he could get Lisa out of his mind. It was clear that didn't work and it made him want Lisa even more. I asked him what it was about and he said it was about them. They knew they were meant to be together. I was just a stand-in for Jimmy so he could finally meet Lisa. It took me a few days to get myself together while I stayed at the hotel. I was still feeling crazy and trying to convince myself that this was all just a cruel joke that life was playing on me. After almost six days, I finally went home because I didn't have to get my things together and go back to work if I didn't want to get fired. I got home to find that Jimmy and my family had been living together under the same roof while they waited for me. It would have been almost touching if I hadn't told them why I was leaving. After I vanished, everyone kept texting me to get me to answer, but I hadn't answered a single one of them. So, it goes without saying that when I finally got back, there was a lot of chaos. Everyone hugged me and told me how happy they were to see me. Lisa was so brave that she came up to me and cried out loud while giving me a big hug. I was so lost that I couldn't even respond, so I just stood there like a statue while everyone screamed around me. Everyone finally settled down and I cleared my throat. I told them I was back to get my things and leave for good. Jimmy had been standing there without saying a word until I told him I was leaving. When I told him I wasn't leaving, he told me I didn't have to because he had already packed his things and was going to move in with Lisa since everything was now clear. My family. Ick. People in my family, including my aunt, who is my dad's younger sister and has lived in the same house since her husband died, were all smiling big, even though I thought there was nothing to smile about. Lisa was standing next to Jimmy and giving him an awkward side hug. She looked at me with sadness in her eyes, but she was still smiling. After a while, I couldn't take it anymore and asked my family what the heck they were laughing about. I thought Lisa had just broken up my engagement and taken my boyfriend of almost six years. This wasn't really funny or cute. At that point, my mom spoke up and told me that they couldn't change the past. They were okay with the future, though, and they knew that Lisa and Jimmy would be together in it. They were sorry that they cheated on their partner and wanted me to know that this was for the best. Lisa told me she was sorry she broke up with my boyfriend, but she just couldn't believe she loved him. It sounds like they were deeply in love and wanted to spend the rest of their lives together. She wished she had told me sooner so I wouldn't have to find out this way. After that, they kissed right in front of me. My mom was so rude that she even wiped a tear from her eye. 
I lost it and told them that this wasn't meant to be emotional or romantic and that what they were doing was gross. I was surprised when my family got mad at me for how I was acting and told me I was being too spoiled about it. This wasn't about being happy for my sister, it was all about me, and they didn't like how I was acting. They were acting so badly about this that I was shocked. I told them all to leave my house right away. I had no idea why they were supporting what Lisa and Jimmy had done while making me look like the bad guy for acting like I was overreacting. My dad stepped in and told me not to be a child, that things like this happen to everyone, and I should just deal with them. Instead of being jealous of my sister, he wanted me to be happy that she had finally found her true love. I couldn't take it anymore, so I said fuck it went to my room, packed up some things, and left again, this time without even talking to them or waiting to hear what they had to say, even though they called my name and told me not to go. They cared more about Lisa and her happiness than they did about me or even about what was right and wrong. I didn't have anything else to say to them. They were so focused on trying to explain away what Lisa had done that they forgot I was a person with feelings. My sister kissed my fiancé on our engagement night, but my family didn't think anything of it. Now, five years later, she's at my door asking for money, and my family can't stand it because I won't give her a dime. My family tried to get in touch with me several times after that, but I never answered because I didn't feel like I owed them anything. A few weeks later, I even got an invitation to Lisa and Jimmy's wedding, but I turned it down. Of course, all of Jimmy and I's common friends turned down the wedding offer to show their support for me. Some family members who knew the truth also refused to interact with my family after seeing how they treated me after the party. I've pretty much cut them out of my life for the past five years. As a way to get back into my life, they would sometimes wish me a happy birthday or new year, but I would always avoid them. I took them off my following and friend lists, but I never blocked any of them. They could see what I was doing because my account is public, which is what I needed. I wanted them to see and know that I was living a great life and that I was still totally envious. Though small, it was the least I could do after they messed me up. Before not long ago, I had no idea what they had been doing for the past two years. Four days ago, my mom called me from a number I hadn't saved. I tried to hang up the phone as soon as I answered the call and saw that it was my mom on the other end, but she begged me for one more chance to talk because they were in serious need of help. I agreed to have a short conversation with her because she sounded so upset and I couldn't turn my back on her at that moment out of kindness. She told me Lisa and Jimmy had started their own business a few years ago, but it was failing badly and all of their backers were pulling out because they weren't making any money. They took out more loans, but that didn't help their business either. They were now deeply in debt and loan sharks were after them. Everyone was after them, from their workers to their investors to the people who had lent them money. My mom knew I was living a fancy life and had the money to help them out. She came to me as a last option and begged me to lend them some money to pay off their debts. It wasn't a small amount either. She asked for almost $95,000 from me. She was telling my mom to talk to me for Lisa. But Lisa wasn't calling me when she needed help. I asked her why. I was told by my mom that Lisa and Jimmy didn't even know she was coming to me for help because they told her very clearly not to. I think we all remember exactly what took place six years ago. Lisa did not want me to know about this and was not willing to accept my help. However, my mother did not know anyone else with that much money who would be willing to give it to them at any time. It had been a few months, and Lisa and Jimmy were still having trouble making ends meet. There was just not enough help for them. My parents did everything they could to help, and Jimmy family also did everything they could. They had to be able to take care of themselves in the future, so they couldn't just give away all the money they had saved over the years. This was especially true since most of my family and Jimmy parents were retired. That's why, having no other choice, my mom called me to ask for help. Even though I had the money to help them, I didn't want to. 
Lisa did the right thing by not calling me to ask for help. They lost the right to ask anything of me the day they cheated on me. I told my mom that I wouldn't help them even if I could. She said I was being mean and that I should think about my family. My mom sounded very upset. As for me, I told her that Lisa and Jimmy hadn't thought about me during their affair, and neither did my family while they were helping them out. So, there was no reason for me to think about them now either. I had put in a lot of work to get where I am now. I wasn't going to give $95,000 to two people who didn't earn it. Then my mom broke down in tears on the phone and told me she never thought I would become so self-centered. She also warned me that my sister and her husband would get into a lot of trouble if I didn't help them. I told them it was too bad I couldn't help, and then I hung up. Since then, my mom has been texting me several times an hour to ask me to change my mind and think about my sister instead. She told me that now wasn't the time for small fights and that Lisa was in a lot of trouble, so if I didn't help her now? In the long run, I would really regret it. I don't know what to say to her because I don't want to be the bad guy either. Is it a bad thing that I didn't help my sister with money when she stole my fiancé five years ago? Change one. I finally blocked my family. Before, I hadn't done that because A. I wanted them to see what I was doing and be envious of me. Because I was afraid that if something bad happened to them, I would regret cutting them off completely. I don't care much now, though. Five years ago, I should have taken them down. I have no idea why I kept them for so long. That was small of me now it's not small to refuse to help my sister. It only makes sense to do that. It was a waste of a lot of money, and I'm sure they won't be able to pay it back, even if I give it to them now. And $95,000 is a lot of money. I may be rich, but that doesn't mean I can give that much money away and not expect it back. I would still want that money back even if it was a close friend I was helping. And these aren't my close friends or family, they're strangers. I don't think they'll pay me back, so there's no reason for me to help them. It's really that easy. I also told a few friends about this to get their thoughts, and they all agreed that I had done the right thing by not giving them the money, not even out of spite, but because they were the ones who had sucked me off in the first place and shouldn't expect me to help them now. I don't need to worry, though, because my mom is now banned and can't get in touch with me to guilt trip me. On the night we got engaged, my sister kissed my fiancé. But her family stood by her. Now, five years later, she's at my door asking for money, and my family is mad that I'm not giving her a dime. Today was a very important day. My neighbor called me from work to tell me that there was a couple outside my house yelling for me to come out and talk to them. They had been yelling at the door for about an hour and wouldn't leave. According to my friend, they seemed pretty crazy. My heart already knew who it was, even though I asked her to describe them. It made me even more sure that I would see Lisa and Jimmy when I got home because she told me how they looked. I agreed with my friend that I should take care of this when I got back because she didn't think these two were very good. We knew Lisa and Jimmy were never up to no good when we talked about them. I told her thank you and started driving back home right away because I could not risk them getting into my house at all. Lucky for me, I got there in about 20 minutes and caught them picking the lock on my door as they tried to break in. When they got to my house, I asked them what the hell they were doing. Right away, I tried to call the cops, but Jimmy was faster than lightning and slammed into me, taking the phone from me. Lisa also came up to me and told me that they were just here to talk and didn't need anything from me right now. I told them to hurry up and that they shouldn't think I would ask them inside. Whatever they wanted to talk about had to happen outside in the yard. They seemed fine with it, which made me feel better because I didn't think it would be a good idea to let those two in. Since they had already told me they didn't want anything from me, they seemed pretty aggressive up close. I wasn't sure what to expect. Lisa started to talk and told me that our mother had told her about that call and how I ignored her texts after that and then blocked them all. 
She told me I was acting unfairly and that it had been five years since then, so I should be over it by now. I did these silly and showy things instead to get my family's attention. She came to talk to me about how she felt offended that I wouldn't help them. She said she had the money she needed for now, but there was a good chance she would need more in the future. This time, she got the money by selling their house and all of their jewelry. I knew she wouldn't be able to do that again, so she had to know she could count on me to help her when she needed it. I informed her that she couldn't and that she should never depend on me again because I really dislike her and her husband. Because I was so mad, I also told her that I was trying really hard not to hit her right now so it would be best for them to just leave. Jimmy was so rude as to say that they wouldn't leave until I signed a paper saying that I would give them money whenever they needed it in the future. Really, it wouldn't even be valid if someone pushed me to sign it. I think it's against the law and they must be crazy to think they could get me to sign something like that. When I told them both to leave, Lisa pushed me and told me I had to help them because I owed them something since. They were family and I couldn't just avoid my duties like this. It shocked me that she had actually pushed me and I wanted to hit her, but I held back because I knew things would get worse if I got angry. I chose to get my phone instead, which Jimmy had knocked out of my hand and onto the ground and ran away. As soon as I could, I jumped into my car and drove off, not even stopping to look in my rearview mirror. The engine wasn't turned off when I left the car, so it was still going when I got back. It didn't take me long to get ahead of them. They were obviously not stupid enough to run after me on foot, so they just waited at my house, which was a bad idea. Once I was far enough away from them to be safe, I called the cops to report what was happening. After that, I got back to my house just in time, since the cops had already shown up at 30 minutes. After I told them what happened, they arrested Lisa and Jimmy and took them away. The charges weren't that serious and I thought they would get away with it, but it was still worth it because they were taken away and I didn't have to waste any more time with them. I haven't heard from anyone in my family in a couple of hours, which is strange because I thought that by now at least one of them would have tried to call me from a different number, but they haven't. Either they're over everything and won't try to get under my skin again, or they're just waiting it out and biding their time so they can get in touch with me later, when things are a little less tense. Hello, the last time I talked to you was about a week ago. I really thought that my family wouldn't worry me again since I had reported Lisa and Jimmy to the police. I was wrong though because they still bothered me again. This time, it was my parents who came over and asked if they could talk to me for a minute. They didn't seem as cocky as Lisa and Jimmy did when this happened yesterday so I let them in. I think my mom started crying as soon as she walked into the house. She told me she was sorry she had ever supported Lisa, sighed over mine. My dad told me that when they heard that Lisa and Jimmy were arrested for their behavior and that they had also hit me, they couldn't look at them the same way and chose to cut them off. During the whole time she was here, my mom kept crying and my dad told her that they were sorry for supporting Lisa when I was really the one who was wronged. As much as I liked that they finally saw sense, it was too little, too late for things to get better at this point. I didn't want to go back to putting my family before myself because I was used to living my life the way I wanted to. It meant a lot to me that they came to apologize, but I couldn't promise that I would work on our relationship because I didn't see any point in trying to fix a relationship that was already broken, even if it was with my parents. That's when they started to argue and say that we could fix it if we wanted to. But that was the trouble I no longer wanted it. That was all I wanted to be alone. I told them I appreciated their work, but I was done with this. They looked a little let down, but they finally left and asked if I could unblock them so they could still talk. My parents are no longer blocked, which is strange, but I guess that's it. 